Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna be breaking down the following typical themes of the Cairo Khan. What's the best way to deal with the quick bishop c4 line in the Tartakovar? And how to play the upcoming positions? How to put pressure on white's position by advancing your kingside pawns in the endgame? And at the end of the video we will see what happens if a hyper aggressive play fails to win quickly. And how to exploit white's weaknesses in the endgame? This time against an international master. Okay, against e4, gonna be trying out the Karo Khan. Yeah, just going d5 and okay, we could take. I'm wondering whether I wanna try out any sidelines or not. Yeah, let's take. Okay, let's play the simple knight f6 move once again. Yeah, it's the bishop c4 line. Um, I think there are like some other interesting alternatives in this position, like maybe knight a6 is an interesting move. I feel something like that is perhaps recommended in Erwin Lamy's course can't really remember though maybe he was starting bishop f5 to meet queen e2 with bishop e7 I, I, I don't remember it I think knight e6 though I think knight e6 is what maybe Erwin recommends can't really remember but he has an amazing course on the Karo Khan the idea I guess is just to bring knight c7 and play bishop e6 when they check and taking was indeed an option for them but uh, I mean, the positions should be dynamically balanced after they double up the pawns, but it's still uh, kind of tricky. You need to know what you're doing, I would say. And okay, could throw in this move if I want. I don't really need to. I can just play bishop e6 and... Uh, ooh, he takes there. Yeah, I think just queen takes. Still, this is undefended. Gonna be taking you with a knight and... We just got ourselves a very nice equal position. Um, how do we continue though? It's not that simple. Okay, just rook e8, rook d8 is how you place the rooks. That is like pretty standard. I don't think this is a good move because he takes and we take the knight, but he keeps the strong bishop. Yeah, just rook d8. Could still trade, but um, yeah, I don't need to rush with it. And key against this, he wants like knight e4. Have a feeling. Don't really mind it that much, but. Perhaps it's a little bit annoying. Yeah, knight g3 is a little bit of an annoying move, have to say. It's like if I play g6, they get knight e4, forcing queen e7 kind of. There's like no way for me to stop that. It's not like a disaster, but maybe just like taking is fine. I don't think pawn takes is so amazing for them because the double pawns will actually make it harder to create a passer. So I think taking on b3 actually in this structure was completely justified and Maybe b5 now is a move. Maybe simply b6. Do I want to go b5? Maybe he wants a4. I think b6 because b5 he had a4 activating the rook. So we don't want to give that for free. And now maybe just like... Uh, okay, g6 still knight e4 may be annoying. I mean, this is fine, but I'm still kind of always uh, tempo short. It feels like maybe it's just me having bad handling of the position. Probably that. <laughs> Other than anything else. So queen d5, yeah, should be okay. Queen d5 take maybe with a, with a knight, I would say. Okay, this time taking is much trickier. But I think it's doable if I combine it with a5. But I'll just do g6. Stopping knight f5. And as long as we can stop that, I think we have a very fine position. We're taking with a pawn, by the way, always. Controlling a lot of squares if they take. Okay, rook e2, preparing to double up. I think we'll do f5. When they double up, we take on e2 once. Take on b3 and play uh, maybe a5. Uh, that's rook e7. I don't know. Okay, I think we can just easily do this. And uh, He could have taken on e8 twice, by the way. Trading one should be okay. 96 felt good. If I can get a5, maybe I'm slightly better. I, I might be slightly better anyways, like b4, c5. Might be overestimating my position a bit, but I think it's better than uh, being a little bit optimistic rather than pessimistic in chess in general. So just do c5, activating the rook. dc, I think we're taking with a pawn and then playing for rook d2. I think black now has very good control over the position. Don't like taking with a knight because of b4. Maybe that was doable. But I just like to play for rook d2. And also rook b8 was a threat. Like rook b8, now he has rook a3 problematic. So just rook d2. 
He takes a7, I take on b2, but my rook is gonna be much more active. Plus the knight on e6 is just a powerhouse. Could also maybe consider knight f4, knight d3 ideas. But for now, I'd like it there. If they play rook a2, maybe then uh, a5 could be like a funny move. Could also do knight f4, just trying to dominate his knight. Yeah, I'm gonna take this one. Yeah, I think he's just uh, much worse now. I'm gonna be up a pawn since a7 is poisoned because of rook b1. And uh, yeah, he's trying to like activate a knight. It definitely makes some sense. He wants like uh, knight d5. I think we can do this. Defend the pawn and knight d5, king g7 with the rook there. I think that should be good enough. I'm actually not up pawn, but two pawns. Because even though I have the double pawn, it should still technically count. Just king g7, I thought. King is nicely placed there. Uh, of course, I've missed his frat, but I have a six as a lucky, as a lucky guy that I am. And I think we can check. Could also play rook b6. So many tempting moves. I'll go with the check. You know, the pater sees the checks and gives a check. So I'm gonna do that. Give another one. Mm, knight f4 and knight d3 looks like a win to me. I'll just have to blitz out from now. Okay, your opponent taking forever. <laughs> this is kind of annoying. He's testing me out. I think he's staying like a lot for each move on purpose. Not like really calculating, but trying to see... I mean, trying to make my pre-moves a bit slower. I don't know. Maybe he's not. Okay, play knight e5 on that and rook e2. Have everything defended. Oh, I gi gifted knight f7, but that should still be a win. Knight f7, king f6 is simplest. Knight f7, cute trick, but king f6 killing all the fun. Yeah. Yeah, rook g2, rook g1. Oh gosh. He's actually literally trying to escape this. <laughs> Okay, we got a mate. All right, that was good. We managed to outplay him in the in the end game. I I don't know. It was like a strange game. I felt like I was getting outplayed at the beginning with a squincy two kind of nonsense, and then yeah, once we've got a knight to e six, it's just uh, the position started playing itself. Didn't really add that much to do. Yeah, like rookie okay, one. There was like a bunch of sketchy stuff that happened. So. I knew I was doing very well from the opening and perhaps knight e6 was good. Do you remember seeing this in the Erwin Lamy's course? Because the thing is, is, is not so, so, so the thing is, if I play, let's say knight f3, knight e6, then for then taking in one go is definitely an interesting idea. But okay, I mean, after playing bishop c4, wasting another tempo in taking the knight is definitely not that simple. And um, I think this is definitely fine. What we've got into the opening. So it's just like very reasonable for us. I could have taken on b3 immediately. That was like the easiest. But I somehow thought he takes and this is better for him because opening up the rook. But I mean, just to like a5 and pawns are restricted. He's got double pawns and yeah. This is just a nice inclusion for me, I guess, with rook e8. So, okay, it took me a while to realize that I can take on b3, which was like pretty funny. And when I took, it was not like the best version ever. So see, b6 is important because b5, a4, and it could get very double-edged. So just b6 was fine. And uh, okay, queen d5. Like if he was taking, plan was to take this way. But he looks like he can get knight f5. But even this is fine. So like in my head, I had a scenario where I can bring the knight to d6. I've seen positions when that works very well, but looks like it's not the case. And okay, I mean, after finally I get all the moves in, it was 
this was inaccurate because he can trade both rooks and it's drawish. Should have taken on e2 first, but after this, knight to e6, especially rook e1, he should have played b4 like last moment. Thinking with a pawn fell nice and now I'm just, uh, I have like an easy push. And okay, probably I messed it up somewhere, but generally feeling was this has to be a winning position, so I think I can go for the next one. Okay, we're finally getting a game, we're having the black pieces, and uh, we're gonna be trying out a Karo Khan, see how that plays out. Maybe we're gonna be seeing like uh, a two knights, I was about to say, but it looks like we're having the... Uh, Classical variation, which uh, I think is going to be met with the standard Tarta cover. Uh, Bishop f5 is also a line that I used to play in my over the board games a while back, but um, yeah, just going to be going for the fashionable knight f6. And uh, in case he goes queen e2, we might be going for the queen trade, but I kind of doubt he will. Okay, there we see. This is actually quite a fashionable line and we are supposed to play queen e7, there's no other better move than that. And as far as I can remember, there are many ways to deal with this, like one of them is also rook d8, king f8. I think we'd like to start bishop e6 though, because after takes, that would be actually like a good thing for us. Uh, improving our pawn structure because we're taking back with a pawn. And on bishop to d3, I don't quite remember how this endgame plays out. I think rook d8 is like a useful move. Keeping an eye on the pawn and preparing to break with c5 in the future. Could just do king f8 as the king, uh, yeah. Might have been a potential target on uh, e7 and maybe c3 I'm meeting it with c5. Like dc, I don't think we take on h2. <laughs> I was just, uh, you know, thinking about it, but I don't think it would have been amazing. And do I play knight a6 or knight d7? Like the thing is knight d7 allows knight f4. And knight f4 is not really a thing now because of bishop takes and the pawn drops. So that could be something. So like knight d7, knight f4, I can go knight b6, but then he takes on e6 and on h7. Yeah, I, I think I prefer knight a6, simply not allowing knight f4. And okay, I mean, taking is always a double-edged decision for my opponent, and he decides to play a3. I was thinking c3 is way more common for this structure, but uh, on a3, we're just going to be rerouting the knight. Maybe he wants to combine this with uh, c4 idea. But looks like uh, he's allowing us to get a knight to d5, which should be uh, pretty nice, I thought. And now his idea is to play with uh, c4. I think maybe f5 could be a move, and c4, knight f6. Perhaps knight e4 ideas. Could also do b5, but then b3 seems to be problematic. Couple of options. Knight e7 with bishop f5, also not entirely stupid. Okay, I'm gonna be playing knight e7. I think c4 was about to come anyways, and this way I'm preparing a bishop trade, which I think should be pretty okay for us. Plus, maybe we can simply also play bishop back to c7, followed by um, yeah the double up on the d file. Okay, opponent plays bishop to e4. Um, yeah, I guess that is a fine move, but definitely not the best one. And could do the same bishop to f5. I think I kind of like that idea, because once the bishops are getting traded off, then, uh, well, maybe we have a little bit of pressure against that uh, pawn on d4. I mean, nothing dramatic just yet, but still, I think it's kind of nice. And... Do we start with g5? I really want to play g5, but I don't think it's the best time. So I'm going to do it this way. Reinforcing the knight and Okay, I mean, opponent is technically up a pawn because I have the messed up structure. But uh, I think we can uh, take some space over the king side in return. And planning to take it with a knight. Maybe knight c4 ideas. I think it should be technically okay for us, but I'm definitely gonna be getting plagued, <laughs> most likely. 
So I think h4 is nice. Could do like knight f5 as well. Or rook e8. Let's start rook e8, hitting the knight. Maybe he has to play king f1. He does that move. Gonna be bringing the rook. c4, knight f5 simply might be played. Not sure I really needed to bring the rook onto the e file. Perhaps the rooks were better placed uh, on the d file. Just uh, keeping an eye on this guy, but I think it was fine. Could just do knight e4 perhaps. It looks a little bit more active than knight f5. Maybe even pushing this pawns. I mean, white can easily become worse if he stays passive like that. I think knight g3 is now pretty juicy and combine with f4. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm like kind of overestimating my position a bit. That might be right. So I think we shouldn't trade both rooks. That is dangerous. Because the king and pawn endgame might be losing. But uh, I think as long as we play it this way, trying to slowly take some space and then break with g4, I think we should be okay. Do I have rook e8 now? I don't think it's the case. I think that's perhaps a draw. But maybe just like could do rook d5. That's interesting. Wow, I've got no time. I really need to start blitzing. King d3, maybe expecting him. Yeah, uh, rook a j8. Definitely way too slow. Can't really push g4, can I? Okay, now I can for sure. Like, if he takes king g5, is amazing. Yeah. Okay, now I'm better. Yeah, okay, f3 could be potentially coming. Rook e4, king f5. I thought that should be good for us. Oh, well, he took. Didn't expect that. You will need some speed at the end. Need to hide on the h-file. That's a safe pre-move. Oh, maybe it's not. If he plays rook f8, that could have been like a pretty dirty attempt. Yeah, I'll need to bring my king. That is like the key strategy. Oh. Fuck, I, I messed it up. That was dirty. Oh my goodness, that hard. I mean, we're kind of comfortable the whole game, but that like really hard. Okay, I mean, kind of a boring game with the end game, but uh, definitely fine for me all the time, I guess. Okay, you guys need to see the analysis tab. Okay, not sure about my 97 move. Uh, th that's like how the theory goes. Uh, taking with a bishop, maybe it just allows bishop f4 or something. I'm not. I'm not sure. I just know that uh, taking with a king is the move, and yeah, it's pretty much theory. Uh, yeah. Uh, well. Okay, I think he. My opponent had some like plan in mind going into this. This is definitely theory, but. Um, Okay, a3 seemed a bit strange. Okay, I mean, after I got a knight to d5, it was definitely okay. Yeah, knight e7, some, somehow I wasn't sure about this move, but it's uh, perfectly fine. So yeah, like, knight e7 apparently was fine move. Because in a way, if you think about it, he's going to be playing c4 anyways. 
and b5 is not amazing because of b3 i thought and okay even if you do something like this Mm, then c4 is kind of problematic i mean i thought this is problematic maybe it isn't but to me it felt like this pawn is pretty weak and these pawns are like pretty good maybe it's the other way around who knows 97 was played we're just gonna be looking at this end game for a bit and then um yeah okay i mean i was definitely very comfortable h5 was a good move like i was um trying to decide between h5 and g5 in this position I, I have a feeling g5 was not good yeah g5 allowed f4 i had something like this in mind maybe he still could do it in the game no in the game g5 was perfect yeah i'm just like better i told you like he can easily become uh, worse even though i have the messed up pawns uh black is pushing like i've seen a similar theme in the gameplay between uh, bogdan dak and konstantin lupulescu which was pretty much like same pawn structure, but uh, black was pushing with the extra space, which was like really hard to imagine. And yeah, here I'm just like better straight up after knight g3. Mm. Could even play like knight d6 even, just keeping knights. I didn't even consider that idea. Yeah, knight d6 would have been just... I think it would have been an easy win because I'm preparing just bringing the knight to e3. Yeah, I didn't even consider this. Kind of panic though. Because I was uh, under a minute. Yeah, I mean, knight d6 is genuinely a free win. Even knight here. Just keep knights. In the game, I just kind of freaked out. Okay, this game might actually be pretty instructive for the Tartakovar. We might actually put it on YouTube anyways. Because I'm kind of lacking Karo Khan content. Even though we lost it in the end, I think it was definitely a win. And, well, even in, at the end... Uh, even in the end, I, I was winning, but I got flagged, but I'm like wondering, how is this better? I, I thought this should be a draw. It's probably just like a dead draw. I don't think this is ever better. Like white can't really create a dangerous passer. And I mean, they can, but I'm controlling it and I can always create counterplay with G4. So king and pawn games are definitely a draw. I was thinking maybe we could potentially do something in the rook game, but but again, it should be really flat. But after he allows g4, I'm no longer sure. Like, he should have played more active. Okay, taking was a mistake. f3 was precise with king f4. Yeah, I can imagine that. But I mean, I just played it like this. Should have gave check, but uh, yeah, I've actually seen this move. Uh, with g2 rook g4 but i would have played rook g8 and uh, i think this is still lost taking the pawn and like my king is in time going under the queen side would have been winning and in the game was pretty much just a free win after i got the rook like end game is easily win if i play king c3 here i mean i just i thought i'm collecting this pawn forgot he can push d7 <laughs> i can just go there and collect his pawns what is this <laughs> Uh, okay, the, it was then a draw, but but I mean the dude was like really tricky. Like you see this guy, like he didn't even quin because he knew I'll prime of it. He played king b7. Imagine he's so dirty, he plays king c7, king takes on d8. How would have that been? <laughs> uh, fine. Let's see if he's got like something else against our Karo Khan, and he opens up with e4. Gonna be going for the. Mm, yeah, Karo Khan goes for the advance once again, and he's repeating the same line. Um, what a crazy guy. This is no bueno. Just dropping the bishop. And um, yeah, after h4, just gonna be repeating the line. I mean, if he's willing to do that, it's been working amazing for us. So we're definitely gonna be repeating this one. And queen d6, knight d7, like previous game and okay he's going check but just king d8 i think i don't think it makes much sense to play uh, king uh, d7 and okay opponent plays with g5 uh okay, throwing the check i think just going e5 is like an easy way to equalize and queen f7 knight d7 and like after the queen trade i think i'm just better in the end games i just like need to defend uh, my bishop and I don't really see what is uh, white playing for. Okay, I mean, I have some issues with the king, but he has some issues with the queen as well. 
So I don't know if this is like really worth it. Seems to be a pretty big price to pay. Okay, I shouldn't take us then his knight is gonna come into the game. That is something I should try to avoid. Do I have e6? d, knight takes on e5, queen b7, it's annoying. Yeah, I think just king c7 should be okay. Maybe that's like a blunder. It could be the case. Could very much be the case. Do I have g6 move? Like d5, knight takes on e5. I thought queen is almost trapped. But like g6, what's the threat? I don't like g6 because I have no threat. Maybe e6. But like e6, d5, knight e5, queen b7. I have rook b8. No, that should be good for me. Come on. I don't buy this. That I think should be good for me. Even though he collects the queen side, I mean... I think we have... I, I have a feeling we're having such nice development in that variation. Just plays knight c3. Interesting. Could do knight e7, just trying to develop. d5, knight e5 once again, and there's no queen b7 anymore. Just trying to get myself developed. Maybe knight f5 could be a move on the next one. Still not easy to play this position as my opponent, and maybe in fact I'll play king c7 eventually. Okay, so he takes. I think knight takes is like only sensible move. Gaining a tempo, forcing queen f4. And then... Could do knight g6. Even knight f5. Like, knight is better placed on f5. To be fair, knight g6 wins a tempo, but maybe I prefer the... Long-term placement for the knight, which is better on f5. And the idea is to play knight c4 next, and... His bishop will have a hard time finding a good square. I think I just like that better. And... Hard to make any moves now as white. Keep saying this, but that's like how the position is. <laughs> very hard to play. Probably also very bad objectively. Okay, end games are always fine, by the way. Maybe just taking. I think he kind of has to castle. Oh, there's queen before checkmate again. <laughs> that's like a pretty insane idea. But I think he has like knight d1. Oh, he doesn't. Wait, that is checkmate if he castles. Oh, he's like the natural move running into checkmate, so he has to trade. Almost forgot about that idea, but I think that was mating actually. So he's forced to do this and now castle, but that is just like a superb endgame for me. I'm like almost winning the exchange, I could even play knight e3. So many tempting alternatives. Um, how about we start with king c7? Connecting rooks, giving him the chance to blunder. Probably will play b3. And then maybe take, followed by... Um, e5 is like a safe way to get an advantage. Couldn't even try to be trickier and try to go for the exchange. Also, knight e3 is very juicy. Kind of forcing him to take and play rook d3. I think we like takes. And then maybe like rook f8 seems like a very useful move. Keeping an eye on the f pawn. He takes with a king, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting it. So I'm gonna be trying to um, double up on that pawn. So you s remember I said knight on f5 is good? Now I kind of take it back. Would have liked knight on g6, but maybe that's not a, not a good time to cry. So I could do rook f7, but g6, rook f6 should be a good thing for me to include. So I don't really mind this. I'm just doubling up. I was considering playing g6 first, but I don't think we need it, and... I think white is just uh, much worse in these end games generally. He's going back. Again, just like super passive. But that's just because he has a bad position. Again. Just have to speed up with this a bit. Just make some common sense moves. And like knight g6 I wanted. Maybe knight e5 ideas. Increasing pressure on f3. In case of knight g3, we take and take on h4. Hard for him to do anything. C4 looks logical. Maybe just knight f4. Could take it with the rook, but I prefer bishop, and this is big flat. And if he takes on d5, it's easy win. 
even this should be very pleasant for me with the central pawns it's just a very nice position to play yeah it's just his rooks are so passive even though it's a rook end game it's still like very good winning chances for me because of his rooks that are super passive maybe i kind of trap my bishop but on but i mean still it feels really good for me bishop g3 yeah rook h3 just take on f3 and that's a win with rook f2 and we're winning the knight and against this i wanted e4 maybe is this winning i have a feeling it should be i'm like up a pawn right yeah i think it's i'm up a pawn and this should be a win oh i've had rook f2 wow oh i shouldn't flag i had rook f2 and i was winning the knight but uh, no time to cry this is still like winning oh my goodness i almost rage quit it there but like the position is still fine because I have bishop h2 and bishop g1 kicking him out. He's unable to keep the fortress. Giving counterplay with knight f4, it's getting a bit double edged, but bishop on d4 should uh, keep everything together. Even have ideas to sack the bishop if needed. And I'm uh, catching up on the clock while collecting all the pawns, which is nice. Yeah, just like, uh, okay, bishop h8 should be fine. I mean, you don't need to play this move, but just kind of nice. Yeah, b6 and uh, push the a pawn. That's kind of how it goes. King b2. I don't think he can stop that one. Yeah, a4. Knight f7, bishop f6. King b2. Gonna be happening soon. Just push the pawn. I think he's just like way too slow with a counterplay. Oh, we get the skewer at the end. This is dirty. Yeah. This is gonna be dirty. Okay. This is gonna be dirty. <laughs> We're promoting like same time, but he's dropping the queen. Okay. That was like really funny. So you see this guy's, I mean, he's going there. I go queen. He gets a queen, but I move it and he's losing the queen. So he lost on time for that reason. But uh, okay. I think it was like interesting. Pretty well played the uh, end game. I, the only thing that I'm like not happy about is the fact that I missed uh, rook f2 check. I mean, I didn't miss it, I forgot about it. I feel like this was forcing a win because he can't move the king back because of rook f1. He can't go up because of rook f1 and he's forced to take and then I'm just collecting the free knight and that is GG. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video and if you're looking for more content make sure to check out uh, some of the previous episodes from the same series.